Are Christians allowed to eat meat sacrificed to idols, to other gods? To some of Paul's audience in Corinth, this wasn't a big deal, since they believed that there are, in fact, no other gods besides the one God whom we know in Jesus Christ. Meat sacrificed to those other gods was no different from meat slaughtered by a butcher. The interesting thing is that Paul started his response to them by actually agreeing with a portion of their premise. There are no other gods, and so to eat meat sacrificed to them is not the same thing as participating in the worship of those gods. But Paul recognized a deeper issue here, and it is to this issue that we turn today. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas. In the matter of whether or not one can eat meat sacrificed to other gods, Paul saw immediately that the relevant issue at stake wasn't the meat, but the problem of spiritual pride, the problem of people in the Christian community who believed themselves superior to others because of their higher level of intellectual sophistication. They reasoned, correctly as Paul says, that there are no other gods and therefore eating meat sacrificed to those non-gods was not a religious issue at all. But that's where Paul's agreement with them ended. Their unwritten premise was that matters like this were matters of personal choice. That's the, the premise that Paul eviscerates in the next section of 1 Corinthians 8. Referring to their argument, he says, It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your own family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. You may be correct, says Paul, that eating meat sacrificed to idols doesn't implicate you in worshiping other gods, but that's not really the point. The point is the unity of the fragile Christian community. The fact is, there are others in the community who are scandalized by those who eat this meat, believing rightly or wrongly, that simply eating this meat does indeed implicate them in the worship of those gods. I've told the story before of a couple who were friends of ours who had experienced marital difficulties over the years. One of them had been unfaithful to the other, and the one who had been cheated on was justifiably angry. But in the course of marital counseling, the counselor turned to the one who had been wronged and said, do you want to be right, or do you want to be married? This is exactly the question Paul poses to the Corinthians. Yes, you intellectual snobs, you may be technically right on this point of theology and practice, but in insisting on your own way, you are threatening the fragile unity of the church. You may be technically right as a matter of belief, but you are dead wrong as a matter of practice. The tricky thing here is that Paul recognizes plenty of instances where Christians may indeed disagree and still be part of the church. For example, we saw just earlier this week that the question of whether or not to marry was a matter over which Christians could disagree and still remain within the fellowship of the church. But in this matter, as with several others, Paul insists on unity of practice. 
So why is this particular issue one about which Paul insists on such unity? Why not instead say to the others in the Christian community that they are wrong to be scandalized? I think it boils down to a matter of the heart. There is nothing inherently wrong with eating meat sacrificed to idols, but when that practice is done out of pride and arrogance, it becomes out of bounds. Keep this in mind as we continue to read through 1 Corinthians. Pride, arrogance, and its cousin condescension, these are corrosive elements for life in the church. But as we will soon see, Paul has a better way to beat church. Tomorrow, Paul will extend his argument and apply it more broadly. And in doing so, he makes mincemeat of one of our most cherished Western values. But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.